You're listening to the Run For Your Lives podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Daphne. And I'm Paik. And this is the Run For Your Lives podcast. This episode is the zombie comedy film, Shaun of the Dead, directed by Edgar Wright and released September 24th, 2004. We are finally diving back into the world of my favorite director, Edgar Wright. Super excited for that. Yes. The Cornetto it's... trilogy. Yeah. It's got some good... We need to do all of it at some point. Oh, we're uh... going to. We <laughs> yeah. have to. Even though Hot Fuzz kind of doesn't. Uh, mm. it's close enough we're doing it anyway because you know what on this podcast we Mm. do what we want and you guys enjoy it so let's just you know we have to do we have to cover hot fuzz you know why for the greater good the greater good the greater good anyway that's that's for when we get to that (laughs) one um (laughs) but for now we're starting where the cornetto trilogy begins Shaun of the Dead. So excited. It's going to be a lot of fun to talk about for sure. <laughs> and this is our season six premiere. Oh my God. Season our six. Debut. Really? We are here. Season six. We made it. It's our first. What an episode to start with for season six. It's kind of like last season. We started with it. Do we just have the plan now? It's like, we're just going to go ahead and start with the movie that's going to win all the awards at the end of the season at the look back anyway, right? <laughs> I think you could be correct. <laughs> I've been very careful when thinking about what movies should start our season. <laughs> I mean, we started, I think it was the third season or fourth season with Ready or Not, which is one of my go-tos. Love that yeah. movie. Yeah, I think maybe you're right. I think we do go with a really strong contender right out of the gate. and then. After that, we just kind of go where things are going to go. We are we have a plan, but we just kind of let things go. And there's a more of a, a laid back vibe to it now than in the yeah. beginning when we were planning everything out. Right. Like we've had weeks where you're like, are we going to cover this movie? And it's like, nah, I'm not ready for that one yet. Like that happened with <laughs> Nope. I was like, I'm, I'm not mentally prepared for Nope. I have things, other things that I'm busy with that week. Let's just do something else and then we'll come back to it. <laughs> yep. And that's what we do. I mean, I think uh, we kind of know some of the movies we want to cover, but it's kind of like when we're going to do it is yeah. still up in the air. Because some movies, like you said, with Nope, it takes bandwidth in your brain to be able to process through and take notes and talk about it. Yeah. So, sometimes we do a movie like The Gate or Chud because it's easier, yes. it's more <laughs> silly, and it's easier to process through. Yeah. And then with this one, it's just, it's a classic. An all-time favorite for both of us. I and know. it's just something that's so easy to jump into and talk about. <laughs> I don't know how to handle you saying it's a classic. Because this movie came out 19 years ago. Mm -hmm. I just am in awe that it came out that long ago because it seems like, oh, maybe late 2000s. Nope. This one came out 2004. I I don't know. Time definitely flies. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we will get started like we always do. That has not changed here at the Run for Your Lives podcast. We are going to dive into some production notes. It was filmed in and around London, England. The script was written by Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg. It's the first film in the Cornetto trilogy by Edgar Wright. Budget was $6.1 million. Got thirty million at the box office. Ninety nine minutes. I do love a movie that comes in 
just about an hour and a half to an hour and 40 minutes. It's just yeah. the sweet spot. Perfect. Paik, it's time for a synopsis. Why don't you tell us more about Shaun of the Dead? All right. The uneventful, aimless lives of a London electronic salesman and his layabout roommate are disrupted by the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> wow. Ed as a layabout roommate. Yeah. That's so perfect. Because <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what he is. It's totally what he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he brings in some money. He sells drugs sometimes. Sometimes. Just um <laughs> sometimes. Apparently to Noel, the guy that works for, uh, for Sean, <laughs> Rafe's ball. Uh <laughs> tell me, before we start diving into characters, tell me how he changed so much between then and seeing him in the ritual. Right. Absolutely. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> he was just like this, he was kind of a, like a chubby late teenager yeah and wow you almost don't recognize him you don't like, oh man yeah it's like oh my god <laughs> i can't believe it's him yeah i thought that too i was kind of just like i was waiting for that scene to come up and thinking rafe spall man he's changed a lot since he was in this movie yeah that 20 years will do for sure oh my god <laughs> it's almost 20 years yeah, yeah. it's crazy but when they were filming this definitely oh yeah, my I mean... god can you even imagine <laughs> yeah yeah so we can get into it of course we do our kind of character analysis mm -hmm. now the way that this movie is based it's it's sean of the dead so this movie is about sean and his really life is. and his arc and everybody else are just bit players um <laughs> so like 95 percent of my notes at least are just sean and then like the group as a whole led by sean so it's really i will go through the whole movie just in my sean notes and then i've got a few <laughs> uh tiny other little things but yeah. my notes will be fun in another way i have kind of my own section because um i have a like cornetto trilogy dvd pack that has all three in it mm -hmm. and so that version when I put in that DVD to play and I always throw in subtitles whenever I do podcast notes, just that way I can get like quotes and different things down or I can re really pay attention to like the run, like the through line of dialogue and things like that. But I didn't do subtitles this time because when I went into subtitles under that, they gave me an extra option besides English and French and Spanish of Zombo meter. And I didn't know what that was. <laughs> so I needed to look up what Zombo meter for the subtitles was. And it was instead of subtitles with what's being said, it was like pop up trivia where throughout the entire movie, it was giving fun facts about the music credits or the filming location or like different things that went into the scene or alternate ideas for that scene or all kinds. Of, it ran the gamut of like fun facts about the movie. So I have a bunch of that. I didn't use everything that I got <laughs> okay. from that, but but I got a lot. So uh, I think I'm just going to put that in a separate like section after we've talked about character notes and stuff that I can kind of run through the zombie meter facts and fun things that I found out all the way through the movie. I love this so much. <laughs> Which Scott Pilgrim has a thing like that too. My Scott Pilgrim one. Cause I got a lot of stuff from that when I uh, covered it with Ben on uh, Wilhelm. So <laughs> I remember that episode. Mm -hmm. Are you excited to watch an animated series? I am. I'm not an anime person at all, but like they brought back the entire cast of the Edgar Wright film to do the voice acting for their characters. And it's Scott Pilgrim. So yeah, I'm stoked. I'm okay. stoked for it. <laughs> I, I was going to say, even if you don't like anime, it's Scott right. Pilgrim. You're going to want yeah. some Ramona flowers. You're going to want to revisit everything no, mary elizabeth winstead you know how i feel about her i do between between her being my ramona flowers between you know her 10 cloverfield lane other things she showed up in i mean even like birds of prey was huh, okay but man was was she a, <laughs> a, a bright spot but also she's going to be in the next or one of the new upcoming 
a Star Wars series, the Ahsoka series. She will be in that, and I'm so stoked for that. Oh my! So, <laughs> so yes, but yeah, so we will. I'll I'll do the Zombo meter stuff as an extra section because I've got a lot of fun facts and little things from there. <laughs> Well, that sounds awesome. So I think we need to get started talking about Sean. Yeah. Well, we'll start with where we start here in the movie. Uh, We meet Sean and Liz as this dating couple. Liz is not too fond of Sean's roommate and best friend, Ed, who is, like (laughs) the synopsis said, this layabout roommate, this lazy slob who's kind of holding Sean back is what Liz really feels like. It's just like, you're, you're capable of so much and you have so much potential and you can do great things, but God, you just keep hanging out with Ed and <laughs> you're just letting him bring you down. Like that's really <laughs> the feeling that we get from like Liz towards Sean and Ed's relationship. I think that it was clever how you think it's just Liz and Sean sitting at the table, but yes. it's not. <laughs> yes. It's kind of like, okay, well, Ed's over here playing a game. And then Diana and David are on the other side. And it's it's funny, and I'll talk about this a lot as we go through this movie, is there's a lot of really clever little like gags like that throughout the movie that are little callbacks or things like that with the dialogue mm-hmm. that are so funny. Because, yeah, like they're talking about these characters as if they're not there, and then they address them and they're right there. She's like, you know, I don't like Ed. You know, I don't like you, Ed. Like, looks right over at him. And then he's just like, you know, I don't hate your friends. You know, and then he like looks over. I'm like, I don't hate you guys. Like, they're sitting right there, too. It's so. <laughs> I I think when we meet Sean, he, you know, he says he's 29. He's at this, I think, a crossroads where he's been, he's still kind of acting like he's in college, even though college is long since over. Like mm-hmm. his friend Pete, you you see, is more put together and has a regular job. And Sean and Ed are still really behaving like they live in a frat house. And yeah, there's they're not mature. They're still very young spirited, which I appreciate because I think it's important to keep at least a piece of yourself that still oh, can absolutely. have fun. Right. Um, but I can see where what Liz is saying to him makes sense. She just wants him to want to live life a little bit and be a little more responsible. Yeah. And Sean can't, he just can't, he can't grasp onto that. Yeah. That if they're going to take their relationship seriously, that there's got to be more than just drinking at the Winchester every night (laughs) <laughs> and you just keep spending time with Ed when, like, we could spend together. I, you know, Liz hasn't even met Sean's mom yet. It's been three and years. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, right? I can't imagine. You can't be serious about someone if you don't. And it's not like she lives far away. No. She's, like, right down the road. <laughs> if you're serious about somebody, you don't wait three years to take them home. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if it's going to be a scary experience or if you think that your parents are a little difficult or different, you do make that effort. It's just yeah. what you do. But he tells her that he will. He'll try. He's like, okay, well, we'll, we'll start good. Right now, I'm going to make dinner plans. And tomorrow, everything will change. Yeah. If only he knew how true that was, but in mm-hmm. not the way he thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, no. not Definitely not the way he thought it was going to be. And even then, he just gets off to the wrong footing. Like, he just can't remember. Yeah. His brain just doesn't work in a way that is it, that remembers little details. Like, I need to make a reservation at that fancy fish restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's because he just falls right back into this monotony yep. of the life that he has. And you really tell that, but, and they do it in, of course, again, the kind of clever, funny gag way. But you see how just like zoned out he is into the monotony is because we have his walk to, to the shop mm-hmm. that gets, you know, it's an uninterrupted steady cam shot, one take that is repeated for the next day, that later, the Sunday morning shot. Uh, here's a little 
Zombometer thing I got is uh, the first one that we see was actually filmed second, so they did the one with the zombies first and then went back and made sure it was perfectly choreographed when they filmed the regular day one after. Oh my uh, goodness. <laughs> That's awesome. Also, the same actors are in both shots, both alive and then as zombies. They did the yeah. same. So it's... <laughs> I had read that too. It's like that with a lot of the people you see like on the bus or when he's, like you said, when he's just walking to the store. Because Nelson is his, you know, the guy that works at the store and he gets a drink there the next day we see Nelson kind of back, kind of shambling towards the front of the store. Mm -hmm. And he's coming at them when they're in the, in Pete's car about to drive off. He's like, he still wants that 15 He does. Man. Um, Give me the money. <laughs> he's, he's as bad as the better off dead bicycle kid that wanted the $2. <laughs> yeah. And so Sean gets to work. He's not super respected at work. Is no. He? Uh, Really not. We talked about Rafe's fall there a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <No>. I, <laughs> I I don't know how you stand there and try to corral your fellow co-workers and try to lead things at the store when you're not being assertive in any way. He's just... Know, it's just so awkward. There's no I in team, but there's I in pie. pie. And meat pie. pie. <laughs> and and meat in a different order is tea. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Basically, I think he's getting something that his supervisor said very, very, very wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah. He's trying, but he's not assertive in uh, any way. Right. He he doesn't know or he doesn't have the skills to be the leader. Really, mm. at this point, he's just Sean, he's kind of a slacker and he goes to work and he pays no attention to anything going on at all. Not when he's walking yeah. that day or the next day. He notices right. nothing. Yeah. And then while he's at work, that is the start of the through line of the classic line. You got red on you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that. And then, yeah, we get the classic zombie movie trope of the outbreak happening, like we're seeing things that are going on through news channels and stuff. But in Shaun of the Dead fashion, we see it when he is flipping the channels, showing off a TV to customers, <laughs> showing them the wire. You know, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. I thought that Which was is, fun. Is a funny little thing. Yeah. And then he. We get those like little seeds that are planted about zombie stuff. He keeps noticing strange things like the lady falling down at the bus stop. And then while he's at the shop after work and the guy in the park across the street is like grabbing at and looks like he's going to eat a pigeon. But then the bus drives by and he's just gone. Yeah. Uh, when he runs into Yvonne, there's the guy that is seemingly just dead laying on his horn in his car. Yeah. <laughs> It just, yeah, all those little things. We kind of get to watch things happen, but he doesn't really, he notices a couple of things that you mentioned, but he doesn't notice so much. Because yeah. the next day when he's going to Nelson's store, there's apparently some shit that's happened overnight and he notices none of it. Right. <laughs> there's bloody handprints, there's blood on the floor, he's slipping. He notices nothing. Right. It's no big deal to him. And yeah, then that's when, yeah, you mentioned he's just kind of empty headed. The reservation that he doesn't make bungles that reservation and then makes the grave mistake of offering up the Winchester as the backup plan to, to Liz. Clearly she is very sick of that place. And it was a final straw for her. It was. She wasn't going to take it anymore <laughs> because she didn't want to wake up one day wondering what the fuck happened. Mm -hmm. You know, just, that's how she's lived her life. She hasn't done anything. And we yeah. see the contrast between Sean and Pete. Just they're the same age, but their lives are completely different as far as the responsibility and the thought that goes into things. Yeah. Even if Pete is uh, a dick, really. Yeah. Kind of is. But but also, it's got a point. He does. But he is kind of a dick. Yeah. Yeah. He has um, <laughs> he has a really shitty way of explaining it to Sean. Yeah. I mean, right there with Ed in the room, the things he said. Right. But Sean does lose 
Liz. She's had enough. Yeah, he goes over there, tries to talk to her, uh, which doesn't go well, because again, he's just fumbling everything. There was, there's some funny lines in there with how he does that. Like, while they're arguing, and then this line comes up about Sean's thoughts on Dave and Diane. Uh, or he says, you know, you know, who you called a failed actress and a twat. And he goes, I did not call Diane a failed actress. <laughs> <laughs> you know that he did call <laughs> I think that's David so funny. Uh, you know he did. Yeah. I think yeah. most people would. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, you know, I got these for you. It's like, to a wonderful oh. mom. <laughs> Smooth. It's like, uh, you might, <laughs> like butter. You might. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> now it's stuck in my head already. Good job. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Ed's way of trying to console Sean is ridiculous. I really felt for Sean sitting there. He He's lost his girlfriend of three mm-hmm. years. And Ed is just like, he's not helping. No, he's, yeah, he gets dumped. So he's back at the Winchester eating pork rinds, getting his, Ed's Clyde the orangutan, orangutan impression. And then, of course, If You Leave Me Now by Chicago just Starts playing on mm-hmm. the jukebox. It's the triple crown of depression it for is. Sean right now. He's <laughs> he can't take anymore, and he loses himself in alcohol basically mm-hmm. the whole time. I mean, Ed and Sean have like a bromance thing going. They do. You know, they've mm-hmm. known each other forever. My favorite parts so though is when they're walking home and they start. They're singing white lines. Yeah, that song's coming up again on this podcast. That's it funny. is. I know. I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, we covered this. We talked about Cocaine Bear last season. Mm-hmm. It was so much fun, though, to hear them. You know, they're singing. And even the part with the zombie that was just standing in the road, it's like, da 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 I just loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah, that's a it's a great scene. They don't want to bother the lady who's devouring her man, literally. No, uh, no leave that but, but alone. Yeah, the, the street zombie, he'll join in on their song. So, so. Oh, yeah. Definitely an iconic scene from this movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Sean's back home, passes out after this like fight with Pete again about Ed. He did tell and Ed to just... go live in the shed. I yes. <laughs> loved that. All the- he says, "Like, like, like an animal, go live in the shed." And it's like, well, it's like Ed eventually does take that advice. Yes, he, he does. Mm. There were a lot of little foreshadowing comments made throughout this entire movie. That yeah, which is fun because then what does Ed say to uh, Sean after that? After Pete st- uh, storms back off, Ed looks at Sean and says, "Next time I see him, he's dead." <laughs> exactly. Uh- <laughs> yeah, he's in the shower like psycho. <laughs> it's crazy. So Sean is depressed. Mm-hmm. He's written down some things in a drunken state so that he can go ahead and try to sort his life out, as Pete suggested. Yeah. But he looks outside after he had. There's some friends in the backyard. I thought they were probably right. attracted to the rave. That Ed and Sean had kind of late before. at night? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, before that, though, I do like Sean flipping through the channels. It's another one of those great gags <laughs> where he's getting the message of what is, is going on outside while still flipping through the channels. It cracks me up. You know, there's the click, panic on the streets of London. Click, <laughs> as an increasing number of reports have switched this, uh, the football game. Serious attacks on <laughs> people are literally being animal planet eaten Why? alive. <laughs> um, you know, like, I know. It was so funny. Like <laughs> Edgar Wright just does such a good job of weaving story together. He knows how to create characters and then how to weave it all together so that it's fun you're engaged with it the entire time, and before you know it, the movie's over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so then you talked about, yeah, they're, they're visitors. That's where Ed and Sean meet Mary. Uh, and her friend goes through quite, it goes, it's quite an ordeal. It goes from strange to gruesome to terrifying very quickly. Yeah, <laughs> Mary, actually, we saw earlier in the opening <laughs> to the movie, you see her yeah. as, basically, she's working at the shop. 
You know, yeah. she's she's a red a cat. She works at the cash register, and so yeah. Did you see what uh, the the name of the supermarket was that she worked at? No. We'll get there. That's okay. part of the but I know what I stuff. know where Sean works. Yes. <laughs> So you picked up on one of them. Of course I did, because that goes back to my love, my deep love of Dawn of the Dead. Yes, there's a lot of references uh, to different things in this movie. And again, the the zombo meter, I'll I'll really break a lot of that down. But the main references pulled are Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. And a little bit of Night. Yeah, a little bit of Night of the Living Dead. A little bit of uh, American Werewolf in London. Quite a few few references to that. Lots of spaced references. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that I didn't watch spaced until probably six or seven years, maybe even ten years after watching this movie. Mm-hmm. I think you should check it out because I think you'll like it. It's it's probably. Clever. I mean, it's Edgar Wright, exactly, and Simon Pegg, and like, Nick Frost, yeah, and Nick Frost, yeah, yeah. So, Nick so. Frost's character is. Yeah, there's not really anything else like him out there. (laughs) Yeah. He's done more serious stuff, like, recently. Yeah. Which is really interesting to see. Yeah. He also plays professional wrestler Soraya's dad in a movie called Fighting With My Family. Oh. So. (laughs) Wow. What a small world and the connections we make within it. Right. (laughs) Yeah. So that's interesting. But yeah, um. Where were we? Uh, yeah, they go back inside, but a few vo- zombies decide to join them. Yes. Either just by walking through the front door or crashing through the window. <laughs> you know, though, I'm not going to forgive Ed for destroying the second album that Sean ever bought because it was Blue Monday by New oh. Order. You I know. don't destroy. I have that it. in my notes. I was like, "Not new order. What are <laughs> what you are doing? You, doing? <laughs> you can't." Mm. I mean, we thought it yeah, was gone they... already because Pete threw it out the window. But then, by some miracle, it survived. But then, yeah. Ed just picks it up, and yeah, yeah, which is a, is a great scene. I love that because yeah, the the newscaster on the TV. Keeps repeating the by removing the head or destroying the brain yes, line. Yes, I've heard um, that a few times in a few films. Yeah. Uh, so they take that advice to heart and start chucking all kinds of stuff at the zombies' heads, which is funny. And then, yeah, they finally land on the vinyl collection, which hurts my soul deeply. And I don't know why <sighs> they would do this. Poor New Order. But then at least he's like, don't, why would you? And so then they start like flipping through and like. Sean has to sign off on which albums, which is hilarious. Like <laughs> Prince and all these different things. He's like, no, 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 no. And then he's just like, Batman soundtrack, throw it. Yep. <laughs> dire Straits was another one that throw died. it. Yeah. The other two, the other two that get thrown are Dire Straits and then Sade mm-hmm. because it was Liz's. Uh- <laughs> At Sean's, I mean, he was protesting that, but it's like she dumped you. All bets mm-hmm. are, you know, I'm sure he was thinking, all bets are off. <sighs> It doesn't matter. We're throwing it. We we're in this situation again. These were slow moving zombies. They were not the fast ones that you would see in like Twenty Eight Days Later or World War Z or even Dawn of the Dead, two thousand four. Like you don't see yeah. those. These are more Romero type zombies. Slow mm-hmm. shambling. I mean, Sean Absolutely. thinks that she's drunk. He thinks Mary's yeah. <laughs> drunk. Yeah, which he uses the line, she's drunk. Originally in the script, it was, she's pissed, but then they decided to change it for the American audiences so they wouldn't be confused. I wouldn't be confused. Would you <laughs> right. Would you be confused, Peg? No, no, not at all. Pissed means drunk. Mm-hmm. It's a common slang. <laughs> yeah, but then they go to the shed. Sean crashes through the shed. And I was like, there we go, stop abusing the records Mm -hmm. a shovel and a cricket bat much better choices for weapons absolutely those Those weapons did them well for a while yeah and then they go back inside learn more from our helpful tv newscaster about the bites and then they're like well pete was bitten so we're worried about that but we don't see him yet so (laughs) <laughs> not take time to worry about that we've got some phone calls to make he can't get through to liz she's engaged well that was fast uh, 
And then Barbara, Sean's mother, calls, which she's talking about these men breaking into the house. And they were a bit bitey. <laughs> Mom, were you bitten? And she's like, no, but Philip was. Oh, okay. <laughs> just the way that that relief cracks me up. And then, just, you know, Ed coming in. Oh, my God, was she bitten? No, but Ed, but Philip was. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, both of them. It's great. You can tell that Ed really cares about Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he even says, we're coming to get you, Barbara. I Again, Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Goodness. It's great. Yeah. So you got to come up with the plan. We take Pete's car, drive over to Mom's. We take care of Philip. Sorry, Philip. Then we grab Mom. We go over to Liz's place, hold up, have a cup of tea, and wait for this all. Didn't you, the first time you saw this, love the way that they presented those? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because, and then, except, you know, Ed needs a different place, somewhere he can smoke and feel himself. So, you know. Okay, fine. We go to Liz's, pick her up, and come here, have a cup of tea, and wait for this halt to blow over. Except their place isn't very safe, so where is safe? Mm. Go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for this halt to blow over. <laughs> Again, where are we going? The same place we always go. Right. The Winchester. Yeah, even, even in the zombie apocalypse, Sean keeps taking Liz to the Winchester. He just won't take a hand. <laughs> Where would you go? If you go, would, if you were given a choice, you need to go oh, someplace man. really familiar to you. Cause it's going to be safe. Where would you go? Honestly, I'd probably go to work the house that I work at because they have a built in like concrete and steel walled in like safe room with all kinds of stuff you can put in there. Oh, so my gosh. that might be where I end up going. <laughs> and it's, it's not like, you know, it's it's a lake house. It's a little out of the way. It's got it's a whole gated area. So yeah, like it's got a whole gate around it and stuff. So, honestly, it'd be a I think good that would house. work out well for you. Three story, two million dollar house. Yeah, yeah we're gonna... that's gonna work. <laughs> yeah, I remember my sister said that if there was a zombie apocalypse, she was gonna come to my house, and I said, "No, you live on a lake on a road that doesn't have much on it. We're all coming to your house." Because that's yeah. <laughs> the safe place to be. Yes. It makes sense. It's very secure. Yeah. And yeah, like <laughs> the security measures. It's like this is the place <laughs> to be. Yeah. Be safe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh yeah, and then of course that line after that whole plan. How's that for a slice of fried gold? Which that line keeps coming up. I like that. It's just loosely meaning Nick Frost described that as a uh, just meaning the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Can't get any better. And it's actually the first thing we see written on Sean's whiteboard early in the movie. Oh. His, like, to-do list. It just says fried gold on it. Yep. <laughs> I mean, Sean was pretty inebriated when he wrote that list out, but he got the most important things on it. Mm-hmm. And then in a American werewolf in London reference, we just keep seeing Pete in the bathroom mirror. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> every time he shows up not every time but most does it like there's twice like the first time we see him alive is that way and then the first time we see him as a zombie is there is also we see his outline in the shower curtain through the bathroom very there. much like psycho mm-hmm yeah and then <laughs> don't say the zed word why it's ridiculous okay are they out there though <laughs> <laughs> i don't see wait yep there they are <laughs> <laughs> well, all Ed really wanted to do was get the opportunity to drive Pete's car. Yeah, and I don't think Pete will mind. No. Honestly. The interesting thing, <laughs> though, too, is I feel like Ed always made situations happen that would allow him to do the things he most wanted to do. Yeah. He was living out some, some fantasies. He was. And some goals yeah. throughout this ordeal. Life yeah. dreams. He <laughs> was driving Pete's car first and trying to get them so yeah. they could escape from the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they do, they take off in Pete's car. They, Ed hits a zombie or hits somebody and they're worried about it. And I like how they back up and it's like, once they realize it's a zombie, like, Oh, thank God. For that. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> Oh, it takes me back to the beginning when they first were messing around with Mary and they push her down on that steel mm -hmm. pipe thing that impales her. She's got this huge hole. Yeah. 
And then she just gets up off it. And they think, I think that's when they realize that things are a little bit weird. It's yeah. not <laughs> the norm. Right. I get to Barbara's house. Sean goes in. She's waiting for a doctor for Philip, which, yeah, nobody's coming. <laughs> uh, so Sean just lets her make some tea and sandwiches while he uh, deals with Philip. Mm -hmm. Except Philip is still alive and he doesn't want to go anywhere. Uh, and Sean would be good. Though. Okay, yeah, you go. <laughs> like, he's just like, yeah, you can stay here. Except his mom's not going to go anywhere without Philip. So they have to have this kind of conversation. They're arguing about it. And finally, Philip's just like, okay, you know, standing up, you're being a man for once in your life. So we'll go with you because you're, you know. <laughs> well, and that's the thing with Sean. He starts off like this guy that is not assertive and not really mature and over the whole movie he becomes this person that even though he makes the wrong decision sometimes mm -hmm. he's trying and he's really trying to keep them safe like he's focused on trying to do what's best for the group mostly for his mom and liz but for everyone yeah and uh think go outside to pile into the Jaguar because uh, Ed has somehow <laughs> crashed Pete's car. You were part. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ed really wants to drive that Jaguar, so he's going to do what mm -hmm. he has to do, right? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so they're going to pile into there. Ed's just living his best life. Unfortunately, Philip is bitten in the neck. He was already bitten, so yeah, it just exacerbates it. Yes. Let's use a word yes. from the movie, right? Uh, <laughs> they pull up to Liz's flat. Uh, Sean gonna run up there after having to climb out the sunroof because we have the, the child <laughs> locks still on the doors. That's a thing. Safety first. Uh, <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> yeah. See, heroic Sean making it up to the window of the flat on the second attempt. Right? Yeah, uh, he actually does get up there <laughs> to bring her to her least favorite place in the world, the Winchester. <laughs> I know. This is when I really started to see that David had this thing for Liz. There were a few other moments in this where I was mm -hmm. like, oh, God, it really, he really does um, have a thing for her. When you watch a movie like this multiple times, you pick up on things as you go. And I yeah. still, when I watch it, come up with little things I didn't notice. The first, mm -hmm. second, tenth time through. Because I watch this one quite often. Oh, I've seen it so many times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, at least at least Liz gets to meet Sean's mom, finally. I they know. Get introduced. They're like, she's practically sitting in her lap in the car, but hey, yeah. you know, now's the time to meet. Uh, and then we get Philip's death scene in the car, uh, which that was... actually ends up being... Very sad. It, it was. was. He's apologizing and like giving this last little bit of inspiration to Sean, you know, and it really just kind of hits you in the feels. It even hits Sean like right in the heart. You see, and then he kind of like dies after, and Sean's like crying and tearing up, and he's like, "Pull the car over." Well, Philip tried to be this dad to him. He wanted mm -hmm. him to have someone to look up to because he thought he needed motivation, and he thought he could be the role model for Sean. And Sean just yeah. never really accepted it. Yeah. Which then that leads to that line, because then whenever Philip turns into a zombie and they end up having to use the child locks to lock him into the car and abandon the car, he has that little back and forth with his mom where she's, like, wanting to get him out. And he goes, no, that's not, you know, he's like, but your dad is in the car. He goes, that's not my dad. And she's like, you know, like, enough with this. You keep saying this. He goes, no, it was. But it's not right. anymore. And when he had come to that realization, that line was really it was. Kind of powerful for him. He basically has to tell her, that's not even the man that you love in that car. Yeah, that's not your husband anymore. There's nothing of the man you loved in that car now. Okay. Nothing. As zombie Philip reaches up and turns the loud music <laughs> off in the car and gives this like sour face. He's like, oh, well, maybe a little bit, but let's go. <laughs> he hated the music. Like he hated yeah. it the whole time. The one thing that, I mean, I've noticed Ed's driving in this scene a bunch of times, but today when I watched it, it was really 
it hit me that it was like he was driving Mario Kart. Like he was <laughs> like um he's driving like he's playing a live action Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. Like he's hitting things because <laughs> I'm like he has LB power up. Man, I don't know. They weren't <laughs> mushrooms. No. <laughs> And I guess the stop sign outside Barbara's house was the blue shell for the pizza. Uh, yes, uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And yeah, so Phil's gone. So they're out on foot. Got to cut the, the little back roads, back alleys, uh, backyards to get to the Winchester. And that's where Sean and company run into Yvonne and oh, her group of survivors. Yes. Yes. Who are yes. very similar. Yes. Uh, you could even say doppelgangers of our crew that we're following. There's so uh, much about that scene that I un- I uncovered a few things when I was doing the behind nice. the scenes or the, yeah, the behind the scenes that. Yes. Including Martin Freeman and Matt Lucas. Oh both my being God. In that group, which is awesome. <laughs> Just amazing. Martin Freeman, of course, Tim. My beloved Tim from The Office UK. If you haven't seen Mm -hmm. it, you should. It's pretty funny. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, Tim and Don reunited, kind of, in this one scene, at least, here in the movie. I know. I love that show. So good. That's That show introduced me to Lucy Davis and Martin Freeman. Mm -hmm. And Ricky Gervais. Like, I became a huge fan after that. And I still will notice an actor or actress from that show in something else I'm watching and it takes me back and I feel like I need to rewatch some of the episodes (laughs) again. Yeah. Uh, So yes, they run into them, move on. I like, uh, tells them the plan of the Winchester. Yvonne does not seem to think that plan is going to go well. She's like, good luck. Very uh, (laughs) awkwardly like, sure. Cool. And as we see her later, at least she seems to have fared off better. But I don't know. The rest of her team's not there. So I don't know if they did well. Uh... (laughs) Yeah, I wonder about that. I'm not sure. Because it was just her. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who else was on the bus or with her group. Yeah, I don't know. Sean pulls a super acrobatic move to go run after his mom there. Bouncing over that fence off the trampoline. (laughs) (laughs) Much more, uh, you know... It's much more graceful. graceful ...than the first fence he tried to jump yeah. over, so... I know he was trying to show off, but it was kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Which is another uh, kind of... It's not a reference, because it's the starting point, but if you've watched all of the Cornetto trilogy movies, like, so Hot Fuzz and then The World's End after this, that is a running joke. A through line is trying to, like, run or jump over fences or like these, like, well, you know, kind of, and, and not being great at it is a run. Th- it's, it's a through line. It's a joke that's in all three movies. And it's, <laughs> is this where I should confess that I haven't seen the third one? I know you haven't. I have already, anyway, that's why we're covering all three of them on this podcast <laughs> at some point. <laughs> that's what happens. Now. If there's movies you want to watch, but you never make the time to do it, get, Go on a podcast, create a podcast that covers those movies, and then you'll be sure to watch them all. Yes. <laughs> uh, again, the little comedic things that I like, the little gags. Uh, you know, Sean, everyone stay here, and I'll check and see if the coast is clear. Oh, my and then God. Just pop, 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 up this tiny little slide. <laughs> and then steps back down. Do, 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 do. Like, is it clear? No. How many? Lots. Lots. And he looks so <laughs> sad. Yeah. But they're not going to get anywhere by moaning, Pake. Mm. Now, well, maybe they will. <laughs> maybe they will get somewhere by that. Because they do get into the Winchester. They get to it by impersonating zombies, thanks to some Zed coaching by... Uh, die. Die. <laughs> I love to die. I feel like she was so much smarter than she ever really got to show. And... I have to think she was badass. I have to mm-hmm. think that she survived somehow. Like she realized. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think she did. But I want her to. Yeah, but 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 she didn't. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> You're bursting my bubble. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she totally was fine. No, um, no. Mm, mm. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, uh, they get over there, and then there's some issues with the, the door and the window. Sean's just trying to tell them there's a back door, but Dave's not listening because he's way too worried about just getting in as quickly as he can. Smashes the window, shatters it out, uh, but Sean leads the zombies away. Logically, these zombies are not super dangerous all the time they walk literally just right past like one almost like moves out of the way of nick frost as it's like walking <laughs> around like <laughs> but it's a comedy so it doesn't need to be taken too seriously right. but it's just like <laughs> yeah but there's almost that moment he's like oh pardon me i'm following sean now i don't, <laughs> I don't need <laughs> excuse you excuse me you're excuse not me, a buffet sir. snack yeah <laughs> yeah i think then that then... uh <laughs> david was awful how, you break the glass. That is not going to keep the location safe. You need everything to be intact when you go in. It's stupid. Yeah. Well, yeah, it just says, like, we bust out the window. They're just going to swarm in. They're going to follow us <laughs> in. Like, he's not not thinking no. very well at all. He's too busy worrying about putting Sean down at every opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is while they're in there waiting on Sean to return, and that's all... David is just ranting about how Sean is a failure and like this plan is terrible. And is he ever going to come back? And then we get Sean's return, which is him grabbing the hog lumps out of thin air. <laughs> uh, as David throws them, uh, you know, like he does in the opening scene, hog lumps. Yep. Catch them. Uh, he does love those things. Mm -hmm. So terrible name for some, uh, yeah. Pork rinds or pork scratches. Is that what is they, they are? Them there. I get, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm just not sure. And yeah, he grabs those, he's back, and then there's just some great scenes and things. They're like, well, look, we're here, let's drink, let's do things. <laughs> uh, you know, I like that. He's he's not my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not my boyfriend. And then Ed pops up with, it might be a bit warm, the cooler's out. <laughs> and he's like, thanks, babe. <laughs> oh, bromance forever. Mm -hmm. Before Sean leads the zombies away, Ed gets a phone call. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Sean really lets him have it after. And I just was thinking it was tied back to what happened with Noel in the store being on the phone and being disrespectful to Sean. Right. And I'm thinking this is the first, this is an opportunity for us to see what Sean, how he's grown right. in just that two day time yeah and there's more connection to that scene because like I, I mentioned kind of off the top this is one of my those fun little zombo meters i'll throw one in is yeah when uh that phone rings if you can hear the voice on the other end talking to ed that is rafe's ball that is noel calling him oh my god <laughs> that is amazing that is so cool i never knew that did yeah. you know that before the monster? I did okay. not. No, <laughs> it's amazing. So that was fun. I was like, of, of course, because he's probably calling Ed for drugs. Yes, is probably what I he's got doing. Nothing made. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Was maybe was it Ed that was calling Noel in the store before? It probably was. Uh, other than it was the voice of Edgar Wright on the phone in that situation. Oh, okay. Uh, Edgar Wright's voice was on the other side of the phone a couple of times. I wondered about, about that. that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, more funny stuff. Uh, yeah, because in David's rant that I mentioned, he says something about like you know if Sean has a plan, it w it won't be any more than just sitting around eating peanuts in the dark. And then when Liz asks Sean, "Well, what's the plan?" and it cuts to them literally sitting around in the dark, and Sean <laughs> going, "Would anyone like a peanut?" <laughs> <laughs> But then the power grid's back up. Sean goes down to the breaker, realizes the zombies, led by Paul K, are in fact right there. Followed him back to the door. <laughs> led by Paul K? Yes, he was the first zombie that's standing there at that window. <laughs> you learned a lot from watching it with that on. I did. I did. <laughs> uh, so they need to be quiet. Or Ed can fire up this fruit game and just... Bring them all in. Okay, you know? yeah. One or the other. Dumb, 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 Ed. <laughs> dumb. 
And then the random jukebox. Yeah, which uh, was the return of the line, uh, who put this on? All it's random. on random. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> and we get one of the best scenes in the movie. It's my favorite scene in this movie. Did you ever watch Preacher? Uh-huh. There were scenes, I think it was the fourth season of Preacher, there were musical scenes Mm -hmm. where that reminded me so much of this scene. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's my favorite scene from the movie because it's this perfectly choreographed zombie fighting to Queens Don't Stop Me Now. Uh (laughs) David, kill the Queen. What? The jukebox. Uh (laughs) Yeah, David doesn't follow directions very well. No. Um, I I think I'll call this scene the reason that Baby Driver exists. You think so? Uh, With the characters hitting the zombie with the pull cues and fire extinguisher perfectly in time with the music. David flipping the breakers to the beat. It's a very early rendition of what Edgar Wright ended up doing with practically a whole movie with Baby Driver (laughs) of having the music control the uh, action in a film. It's kind of a, a one scene here, and then he ended up making a whole movie following he that did, idea. Though, right? So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I still go back to Mint Royal's blue song, which was, of <laughs> course, Noel Fielding, Julian Barrett, yeah. robbing a bank, directed by <laughs> Edgar Wright. Directed that he did. Yeah, music video it was so, another so part of this baby driver thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have Die throwing the darts, you know, in the head. I don't think he meant his, but, no. you know. Uh, <laughs> Die's not very good Don't with stop that. me. Don't stop me. And sorry, Freddy, we're going to have to stop you yeah. by putting a zombie face first. Through Absolutely. Your but, you, know. <laughs> you know what? Die. and I'm always going to stick up for her. She may not have been great with AIM, but she tried. Like, she was willing mm-hmm. to help Sean yeah. many times. And I liked that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and this is where things just really start to spiral for everybody. Uh, we have the death of Barbara, which was really sad. Also, uh, and then after that, David comes over to put her down before she turns, and we get this cluster, the of just like a Mexican standoff, uh, where we get reveals of a wild love triangle. Square, even I don't know because it feels like Die maybe has more for Sean. Sean. I wondered I, about that I, and I never why? had noticed it before. Right, and now I'm like, did she have feelings for Sean? It's like I get that feeling. I really, I do, do too. Uh, I think he might have been better man. with her. Just because <laughs> I think she would have just been ch- more chill. I mean, she seemed uh, uptight. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But I think it was because she was with David and he was so <laughs> Ugh. She had to pick up the pieces, <laughs> as she said. Right. Uh we get the reveal uh, not reveal, the return of the line when Ed yells at David, We don't say the Z word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, in the end, Sean does have to do the deed himself. So sad. Which is sad. But then David is still a dick, so Sean socks him, and then you see David was gonna pull that trigger on Sean. He did pull the trigger mm-hmm. on Sean. It just clicked. There was nothing yeah. in the Which... barrel. So, uh, yeah, he should go. And go he does. Right out the window. Yep. Carried by zombies. Uh, <laughs> he was unredeemable at that point. Mm-hmm. There's no way yeah. it's not gonna happen. Like, nope, you yeah, gotta and- go. Yeah, and then Sh- uh, Sean and Diane, they can't get a leg up on trying to save David. So <laughs> I see why you did. And then that. Diane is, yeah, Diane is distraught and she ends up letting a bunch of other zombies into the place out of rage. She's running out there to her demise in a way. And you're just like, dumb. Why would you, why would you do like, no, not David. No. Let me open the door. <laughs> okay. okay. No, it just made things worse for the situation. Uh-huh. It's like, what? The one thing, though, when Sean did have the gun, who comes strolling in? What did you notice? One of the Zeds that came in to the bar that he Sean ended up shooting. I think obviously I would notice it. It's kind of a big deal, right? Well, Pete. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a big, yeah, big deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pete comes in. He bites Ed on the arm alongside another zombie. He hit him from behind. Yeah, Sean puts him down, um, referencing back to their argument 
that night that they came home drunk. He says, I said, leave him alone. I (laughs) honestly, though, I felt like Sean was being given a choice in that time frame because Ed was getting attacked. Liz was trying to keep the Zeds away. And Sean couldn't do two things at once. He had, Mm -hmm. I feel like he's looking at Ed, but he's also focusing on trying to keep the Zeds away. And it just didn't work out because Ed ended up getting bitten. And we all know what happens when you get bitten. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then (laughs) more spiraling. Uh, The bar is set on fire. And then Sean, Ed, and Liz are the only ones left. They need to escape. Ed knows of this hatch in the floor. It goes down to a basement where then they can get back out on the street. The shells up on the counter on the bar start popping off, killing the zombified spinster from earlier I in the movie know. when Ed was sh- telling him about the interesting lives of the other patrons of the bar. Did you uh, notice what <laughs> happened to Big Al? I think he was the one uh, with the bo- with the boots. That was Snake Hips. Okay, so Snake Hips. Did you notice? What always ha- surrounded by women. Always, they took care of him outside what looked like a school. They were just mm-hmm. chewing him and up. All the zomb- all the zombies that were on yeah. him? Yeah. Women. Uh-huh. All female. Always surrounded by women, <laughs> as he says. Yep. <laughs> uh, Sean and Liz patch things up right down there in that basement. A very, things are looking... Very sad conversation, though. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, talking about how, how to... You know, well, you do me, then, then do yourself. Well, I just put down my mom and my... my uh, flatmate, so I don't really have the heart to also kill my girlfriend, who says we're back together. Yeah, yeah. it's this. <laughs> yeah, and at one point I was just like, "Give the gun to Ed, and he'll shoot you both." But Ed mm-hmm. also was like, "No, I I was wrong. Shoot me," because he didn't want to listen to them anymore. I know. Uh that's funny, but yeah, you know, things are looking hopeless. But then they do find a way out. It's got a lift. Ed does stay behind. I mean, he's a goner anyway. And you notice the last thing that Liz says to Ed. Because the first line we hear her say in the movie to Ed is, I don't like you. And as they're heading up the lift, she looks at Ed and says, I love you. I know. It's all (laughs) come full circle. And it's all stripped back to Sean and Liz. Like, all of the distractions are gone. The friends. Mm -hmm. Also, the Winchester is destroyed. So it's just really them. Mm-hmm. And we get the shot of them coming up onto the street from the lift, which, with all the smoke and stuff, is actually a really it was cool very shot. Cool. I really like it. Yeah. I got worried, I think, the first time I saw this, because there were so many zombies around. And then all of a sudden, that truck just takes care of everyone. Yeah, military and Yvonne, and Yvonne. roll up, mow everybody, all the zombies down. Sean and Liz take off with them to safety. And then at the end, Sean and Liz are living happily together in the house, living this quaint life. He takes his two sugars, even though he hasn't taken two sugars. He hasn't had sugar in his tea since he was a kid, you know, yeah. when his mom asked him earlier. But after the ordeal they've been through, you can sweeten up life a little bit, right? Well, the uh, place looked nice. <laughs> it looked like they were, you know, keeping it, it neat and they were enjoying some some TV well, we get to see mm-hmm. that Noel has moved on to a new job. Yeah. He's taking care of the cards <laughs> at the grocery store. Yeah, I liked those, uh, the, the TV <laughs> thing. Uh, Z-Day. It's Z-Day. referred to as Z-Day. Yeah. And it's spun off on all kinds of media, news stories, to reality shows recalling the events, and everything in between. We get the newscast revealing what the cause was. But the channel has changed. Right I know. I want to know. Uh, Tell me. <laughs> what is it? But, uh, Coldplay are playing Zombade. So that's yep. good. Uh, the zombies, like you mentioned, like Noel, are being used in menial tasks to help the labor force. Or they're being used for entertainment in a game show like Fun Dead. Oh, my God. So, yeah. <laughs> Those are great. But yeah, they're they're happy. They're at the end. And Sean also still goes out to the shed to play video games with Zombed. Yes. Zombed. Yes. Mm-hmm. I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sean is always player two, I noticed. Player yeah. one is always playing. Player one has entered the game. Player two has entered the game. 
You know who uh, whose voice that was? Whose voice? Peter Serafinowicz. Really? Uh, <laughs> yes he he did the the video game player one player two yeah, <laughs> voice. There's a lot of things like that. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost did a lot of the voices on the TV. Uh, again, like I mentioned, uh, Edgar Wright is on the phone a lot of the time or in different newscasts and stuff. You hear his voice. They really, it was an inside work on a lot of the voices that they needed for extra voices. Just a lot of the cats, just a lot of them are pretty great voice actors in their own rights too. So they could change things up and do different voices. Oh and stuff yeah. There. They also got some actual newscasters to like play themselves mm-hmm. and do that, which I thought was yeah clever. I still wish they hadn't changed piss to drunk because it yeah. just would have been <laughs> perfect. Right. <laughs> yeah, so that's the, the Sean notes in most of the movie. Uh, like I said, I do have a few other notes, but not a ton. Well, let's see what else you have and what I All have. Right. So you go ahead. All right. Well, Ed would be the next character, which I just, again, it's mainly just a couple of little lines. Uh, you know, where Pete is talking to him, he's like, oh, it's not too taxing. Is it writing things on scraps of paper? And he's like, no. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, Ed has that handled just fine. Because then when Peter turns around, you see the little pieces of paper taped to his back with, I am a yep. brick. <laughs> yeah, I think Ed is like the perpetual child that's never going to grow up. He's right. not the friend to talk to when you've had a breakup because he just doesn't. He He's, he's not going to give you the advice you need. His ideas are great for college life, but maybe not for adult life. But right. he's a lot of fun. He's still a lot of mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, and most of these notes and things I've already mentioned, just because I threw them in where they <laughs> fit. So, uh, Ed wants the Cornetto ice cream mm-hmm. from the shop. That is the official beginning of the Cornetto trilogy through line there. There's Cornetto references in all three movies as well. That's why it's called the Cornetto trilogy. Yes. This one, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah, we've talked about the other ones. We're coming to get you, Barbara. Thank God for that. You were parked. And then, what do you know? The rifle at the Winchester does work. He's been telling him the whole time. Ed is right about something. <laughs> That's a surprise. Although dogs still can look up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, those are notes about that. And then just random others. Bill Nye as Phil. Love him. Always so love seeing good, him. So good, right? And he's in Hot Fuzz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of the same cast that does all three movies. He likes to pull in a lot of the same people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I talked about that. Uh, the little hints of Barbara's decline, we do see a lot. Yes. She keeps kind of zoning out, and she seems tired and distracted, and anytime somebody's talking to her after the ordeal where we find out she got bitten by the pajama guy, she's very, you know, like, oh, oh, me? Oh, what? Oh, yes. Oh, you know, just kind of zoned out and that's when Liz goes and checks on her. She gives Liz the necklace that's re- revealing her bite. And then that death scene is just oh, heartbreaking. It's Sean's rough. holding her crying and she's holding onto the flowers that he threw into the bin the night before. He, I think these are for me. <laughs> <laughs> sure they are, Barbara. Of course they're yours. I mean, they were. They were her flowers. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll see. I think anything, uh, another thing I learned from the, uh, Zombometer. Uh, but yeah, cause that opening credits kind of thing where we see all these like normal people doing very mundane things, like almost like zombies. Uh, and so one of those that we see these people all queued up in a line or lined up in a queue, depending on what side of the pond you want to say. Um, and all of those people f- show back up as zombies in this film at various points throughout the movie. Uh, <laughs> I noticed that the pajama too. zombie and the guys outside the Winchester and a couple other things. Yeah. Well, in the, the, uh, I don't know if he was the groom or the groomsman that was behind mm-hmm. Sean at Nelson's store. Yeah. He ends up coming in to say hello. He's the one that walks through the, the front door. Yeah. It was an actual amputee. He did not have a left arm. So, Oh, Wow. That's how they did that. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Funny gags. Again, uh, everyone. Yeah. After they've pulled the plug on the machine that Ed fired up and 
the zombies are all forming around. They can see the outlines and shadows on the wall, and everybody's just kind of bracing for what's going to come. And everybody's putting a shoulder, a hand on somebody's shoulder. And then the zombified owner of the bar comes in and puts his hand on David's shoulder, which is <laughs> so funny. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's all the notes I have about that, like just about the movie. Notes that I took that weren't given to me from the Zombometer. Wow. do that section next after make sure you get your notes and stuff out of the way. <laughs> okay. Well, um, all of my notes are done except for behind the scenes. So do you want me to do the behind the scenes stuff first or do you want to do the rest of your notes? Um, either way. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, you know what? This is the first episode of a brand new season. Let's deviate and I'll do my notes first. All right. And then you can talk about, then you can talk about what you found. I can back clean up with the zombie. You can. It's great, right? It'll work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the movie began as what Edgar Wright describes as a one page word document that sketched out the general idea of the movie. At that time, he was calling it tea time of the dead. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Sean and Ed's friendship is based on the real-life friendship of Simon Pegg and Nick Frost when they shared a flat together. Can you imagine? I, oh my god, it must have been hilarious, like having the the two of them together. So we talked a bit about Spaced, which was 1999 series. It had two seasons. Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and Edgar Wright uh, all collaborated on it. While hints are scattered throughout, as you mentioned, Peg, the cause of the zombie invasion is never really clarified. Every time Mm -hmm. someone is about to say something about it or what caused it, it's interrupted by Mm -hmm. an event or a circumstance. Um, I'm skipping any that we've already talked about. So, in the scene where Sean, Liz, David, Diane, Barbara, and Ed encounter the alternative gang on their way to the Winchester in the movie, there are some pairings, which we talked about. Um, Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines previously worked together as Tim and Daisy on Spaced. Lucy Davis and Martin Freeman, of course. Don and Tim from The Office. Dylan Moran and Tamsin Grieg appeared on a show... Black Books, which I have seen. It is ridiculous. It's just, it's really funny. And then Julia Deacon and Nick Frost work together in Spaced as well. All the news readers and television presenters are real people portraying themselves. And some of the other voices you hear are David Williams on a TV news broadcast, Mark Gaddis on the radio, Keith Chegwin, hosting the Fun Dead program, and Rob Bryden voicing the Zombies from Hell show at the end. And then the voice mm-hmm. at the end dismissing the infected monkeys as the cause is at great. Yes. Many of the zombie extras are fans of Spaced. They recruited them through a website called Spaced Out. It's a fan website. And Sean's phone and answering machine are the same ones that were used on Spaced. I think, honestly, the three of them just wanted to work together again, so they they just decided, let's do this crazy idea, and we'll just keep it going, so we can just have, yeah. like, <laughs> continuous hangout for, like, five or six years while we do all these movies. Yes. When asked by an interviewer why they chose to have slow-moving zombies instead of the ones that run, Simon Pegg said, because death is not an energy drink. I feel like that's... Something that should be on a t-shirt. In the scene where Sean and his group flee from Liz's flat, they all carry weapons. But only Sean is effective at hitting the zombies. It's because the cricket bat that Sean has is a padded prop. The other weapons were real and could have hurt somebody. We didn't want to hurt anyone. We (laughs) talked about all of these bit part characters that you see throughout the movie. First alive and then as characters. That are dead or undead. Um, George A. Romero, the visionary behind some of the best zombie movies. Um, he was so impressed by Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright 
that he gave them a special invitation to make a cameo appearance as zombies in his film, Land of the Dead. It's amazing. It's a really good one. Um, he was also given a private viewing of his of this movie near his house in Florida. So they worked it out for him to be able to see it. Um, we need to do all the Romero stuff at some point, too. Lots of zombie stuff. Oh, my do. God. And those aren't <laughs> even on our list. Mm-mm. But we should do it. Yeah. Or just sprinkle them in yeah. over the time. I think we haven't done Night at all. We did the double dip with Dawn of the Dead. Mm-hmm. We haven't done Night, Day, Land, Diary, Survival. Survival. Yeah, there's so many. Survival was his last one, I believe. It was. The iconic Wilhelm scream it can be faintly heard in the background when the soldiers first arrive to rescue the characters in the movie. And I believe that Joe Cornish was an extra in this movie. He was. And maybe you have some more info about that? Or I don't have I, I read it. It's something yeah, it's well it's yeah, it's just where he was at. Like, yeah, he's yeah. He's in there. <laughs> I know. Please, Joe Cornish, return to working on Attack the Block 2, because I'm excited <laughs> about that one. John and Bernie run the Winchester. These are the real names of the landlord and landlady who used to run Simon Pegg's local pub, the Shepherds in Highgate. When Liz objects to going out to the Winchester, he suggests a few other pubs, one of which is the Shepherds. Mm. And if you were thinking about a sequel or wanting a sequel to this movie. Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright toyed with the idea of creating a sequel that would swap zombies for a different type of monster. However, they ultimately decided against it. They were satisfied with this movie as a standalone piece, felt that too many characters had met their demise to continue the story. The working title for this concept was From Dusk Till Sean. <laughs> Despite not being realized, the idea did get a bit of posthumous recognition as a mock-up poster for the fictional film From Dusk Till Sean, and you can spot it in the movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's awesome. Which, that's one of just the best movies, so yeah. I have not seen that one. <laughs> you should. Okay. You should. It's very good. All right. And I'm excited for the second one coming out this year. Oh my goodness, there's a second soon. one. So, Peg, that was all that I had. Would you like to tell us what you learned from the pop-ups? Yeah, so the Zombometer. Here's, I mean, it's constantly running throughout the entire movie with all the song credits and filming locations. I didn't take much any of those down. Uh, but the th- stuff that I thought was really interesting, I, I did. So I'll just kind of run through them. The opening logos of the movie feature the song Figment, which is taken from the original Dawn of the Dead in 78. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, all of the character names rhyme, and I'm saying that with quotations. It is very loosely rhyming. You have to have a thick British accent for some of them to rhyme, and some of them still, it's quite a stretch, more like sounds like the eventual fate of that character. As we have Sean, who's reborn. <laughs> uh, and who's dead. <laughs> We have Liz who lives, Ed is dead, Dave goes to the grave, Die dies, Pete gets eat, Phil gets killed, Yvonne's moved on, and Barbara ends up a cadaver. Oh my god. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes. There are 77 F-bombs in this 77! <laughs> Is there a yes. tracker up in the corner that keeps track of them? It just no, says it at just, the end? No, it just gave that as a... Actually, right at the very beginning, on the when the first one hits, it's like, this is the first of 77. Oh my um, god. Sean walking and yawning early in the movie, that first, that Saturday morning, is a reference to Day of the Dead from 85. Yes, it is. Uh, I mentioned Peter Serafinowicz, player one, has entered the game. Uh, the dialogue when Ed is playing Time Splitters 2, which is the game he's playing there, uh, is repeated in the Winchester with the rifle scene. <laughs> Reload? I'm on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the camera is placed on Simon Pegg's chest to give that scene a like first-person shooter video game feel. Uh, and the dialogue is reversed with Ed saying, Reload, and he goes, I'm on it. Uh, 
Peter Serafinowicz, his character, always answered the phone on Spaced with Dom. Hi. And that's exactly <laughs> what he does in this movie, too. Uh, <laughs> when Peter gets a, when Pete gets a phone call, Dom, hi. Uh, at work at 4E Electric, named after Ken 4E, of course. Of course. Uh, the supervisor is not there. That's why Sean is filling in. And that character, the supervisor's name is Ash. Ash did not make it into work. That is a direct reference to Bruce Campbell's character in of Army course. of Darkness because he worked at a retail store at the S Mart. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Yvonne's camo jacket was purposely a hint at her appearance with the army at the end. Mm hmm. The Italian restaurant that Sean was supposed to make a reservation at, Fulci's, is in reference to the Italian horror director Lucio Fulci. Mm -hmm. And Edgar Wright is the one doing the terrible Italian accent on the other side of the phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while they're sitting at the bar, Ed and Sean, and Ed comes up with this drinking plan of what they're going to do, it foreshadows the future events coming up in the movie. He says, first we'll have a Bloody Mary, the checkout girl Mary. Then we'll take a bite at King's Head, Philip, and then a couple, Little Princess, which is David and Di as the couple, and the Little Princess being Liz. We'll stagger back here, impersonating zombies, and we're back at the bar for shots from a rifle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Snake Hips, I mentioned this one, yeah, always surrounded by women, so we later, later see him devoured by a group of women mm -hmm. zombies. Multiple other spaced references, like the dog can't look up and the shopping cart outside their house. Bub's Pizzas is the place, the the store next to the shop that to uh, that Sean goes into. Oh, Nelson's, yeah, Nelson's place. Uh, and we also see a Bub's Pizza delivery driver wandering around as a zombie a couple times throughout the movie. Of course, Bub's Pizza being another Day of the Dead reference. Yes, uh, Mary. Yeah. Have you seen Day of the Dead? Um, I've seen the remake with Nick Cannon. I don't know if I've seen the oh, okay. original. The, no, they're nothing alike. I need, yeah, nothing alike at all. So, yeah, we yeah. need to cover it. Mary worked at Landis Supermarket, named after director John Landis, American Werewolf in London. Yes. Of course, the news anchor constantly repeating that removing the head or destroying the brain, not denied the living dead. Yes. Also, when Sean sees zombie peter and he's like we were just wondering if you would join us evil dead 2 reference oh, uh, <laughs> so it's not the dark order <laughs> i thought it might not be this time. <laughs> right? a little ahead of its time uh pickle which is what barbara keeps calling sean is a term of endearment used in spaced a lot and also what edgar wright's mother calls him up to the time, at least, that the DVD facts were printed on in 2004 when this came out. Uh, when Sean and his mother are talking and arguing in the kitchen, you can hear in the background Ed crashing Pete's car. Oh! <laughs> wow. I feel like after we're done with this podcast, I'm going to have to go watch it again with all of these right. things in mind. Uh huh. So I can enjoy it even more. Yes. Uh, Ed originally, after Philip dies, he hits a zombie. Originally, was scripted to then yell "Sweet Chin Music," which I kind of wish that they would have kept that in because, as a wrestling fan, that reference is just well too sweet. Uh, <laughs> Matt Lucas wears a shirt that says "I love pussy," which is very ironic considering Matt Lucas is very gay, uh, but also. <laughs> The shirt was originally intended for Ed to wear, but was deemed too distracting for him to be wearing the entire movie, so he ended up with the I Got Wood shirt instead. Other shirts for Ed that were thought of or rejected are Bump and Donuts, Pull My Finger, which he wears in the opening scene when he's playing the arcade machine, or I'm Here About the Blowjob. Uh <laughs> oh my god. Uh, when they're learning how to pretend to be zombies to get to the Winchester, of course, Sean's zombie impression that he shows die is very impressive because he's doing Bub from Day of the Dead. Yep. Uh <laughs> he did a great job in Land of the Dead in the cameo, him and Edgar Wright. Mm, nice. Uh, also on the way into the Winchester, Tires from Space, the character Tires, is one of the zombies. And his bike 
outfit with the flipped cap and all. Of oh it. my gosh! <laughs> uh, an early draft movie had the jukebox playing continuously through the rest of the film. <laughs> Wasn't supposed to be shut off originally. Uh, Sean's look with the tie on his head, holding the rifle, inspired by Christopher Walken in The Deer Hunter. Oh, dark. <laughs> Christopher Walken in The Deer Hunter. Very dark. Uh, Sean's, don't point that gun at my mom. And Ed going, don't point that gun at Barbara. Was a nod to Reservoir Dogs with, stop pointing that fucking gun at my dad. Oh, uh, <laughs> The multitude of zombie extras were referred to while filming as the Zombage. The Zombage. Uh, David's death is an homage to Rhodes in Day of the Dead. Yes. <laughs> now you know a spoiler so when you see it <laughs> Rose was a oh, he was an awful character he really yeah. was so it, that's a perfect death this is the first big screen death TV, movie death on screen deaths for Penelope Wilton who played Barbara and Peter Serafinowicz uh, although Serafinowicz was the voice of Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace but he it, in later Star Wars storyline that came out after this movie Darth Maul is revealed not to be dead anyway. Uh, both characters have died in TV shows, but this was their first movie deaths. Oh, yeah. Uh, at the end of the movie, the zombie that's on the newscast in the park that stumbles and falls down in the back of the pack is Edgar Wright. <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Edgar Wright's voice on the TV, you said he's in the, a newscaster there, and he says that there was a theory about the outbreak starting from monkeys, but that was false. That is a reference to 28 Days Later that came out two years before. <laughs> Ooh, okay. That is a movie pick that we have not covered either. Yeah, we definitely And should. there is such a debate over whether or not it's a zombie film or not a zombie film. I hope that when we do cover it, we're not dragged into some big, long discussion. <laughs> I'm not sure what you think about it. Right. Uh... See, there's a shrine to the lost friends and family behind the couch where Sean and Liz are sitting. Has their photos and all kinds of things on it. And then when they're trying to talk about the plan for the day, which is kind of in a reverse of <laughs> Sean's plan, where it ends at home but starts at a pub. And Liz mentions the pub's name is the Phoenix, which turns out to be the exact same pub. It is the Winchester. She's okay with going back there. But it has been renamed after being rebuilt from the ashes. Okay, uh, that makes sense. <laughs> but that's really different for her because she didn't want to have right. that boring life that she <laughs> thought she was having. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is just a little uh, information they gave that Shaun of the Dead outgrossed both Dawn of the Dead the same year and 28 Days Later two years before in the UK box office. Oh, but Shaun of the Dead was so good and so were those <laughs> other two. Because tho mm -hmm. those other two movies really like changed the zombie genre. Yeah, because Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead also came out in the same year and yeah, Shaun of the Dead outgrossed it in the UK. <laughs> Would it outgross it here in the US? I wonder. I don't think no. so. I don't think it did. No, there's so many diehard Dawn fans that I feel like mm -hmm. we're waiting for something made in a more recent time frame that kind yeah. of was nostalgic enough because it included pieces of the old that would draw them in. But that's all of the ones that I deemed interesting enough to take while watching the movie. There's a lot of really fun stuff in there. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I feel like I need to get to this version so I can have mm -hmm. what sounds like pop-up video throughout the entire movie. Right now I'm curious if we, when we cover Hot Fuzz and World's End, since it's in the same DVD set, that little three pack, I wonder if there is a pop-up version for both of those movies. Because like I said, the Scott Pilgrim that I have also has Then I would think so, probably. So I feel like it should. Now I'm like, well, can I get that for Baby Driver and Last Night in Soho? As well? <laughs> like, where do we go? I just want to know all the Edgar Wright fun facts. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. So we did it. We did it. We got through the whole thing. We did. It was so fun. We, we sat at the Winchester with a cold pint and talked about this movie and waited for it all to blow over. So. I know. And it did. Yeah. And now the world <laughs> is back to normal. Yay. Oh. oh. I guess, well, now that it's back to normal. Yeah, because...
Now we have feedback phone. People are calling in. The landlines are back up. All right. All right. So we can see what they had to say. <laughs> <laughs> and all right, we do have actually quite a good bit of feedback for our season premiere. So that's awesome. Thanks, everybody, yes. for for writing in and, and checking it out. So hope this season started off really awesome for you guys. It was it was a lot of fun for us, for sure, to talk about this one. <laughs> We've been, yeah, one we got to hold in the back pocket for a special time, and it's oh, such a good movie. So, yeah. <laughs> you know how we like to start a season, every season, with the bang. Oh, yeah. And this is one, like Pick said, we've just been waiting on, and yeah. this seemed the perfect time to do it. Yeah. It's, so it's we a great did. way to, like, hit the ground running with mm-hmm. a season. And now that we're started off with this movie, don't stop me now. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> Ready, roll. So, uh, no. <laughs> We're having a ball. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we have some fun movies picked for this season. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with uh, some of the feedback. We'll read these off. The first one coming from Tony says, Happy early birthday, Pake. Looking forward to the new season. And hi, Daphne. And then a <laughs> gif, a, a nice tremors gif with uh, our beloved Travis Welker. <laughs> Ready for this, old man? Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm already hurting in places I didn't know existed. No. <laughs> He's had a good birthday week. Don't let him fool you. It's been a fun time. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so then ex- this next one isn't about anything that we covered, but it's from our friends at the Tremors Saga. Um as you know, we did that great special episode, but uh, if you'd like to know more about it or actually view Paik and I and Levi talking about Tremors Fest, uh, yeah, Levi posted the video of that recording on the Tremors Saga YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you can check out the video version of that. I'm wearing my, like... Star Wars pajama hoodie thing. I'm just in like <laughs> real chill, relaxed day off mode, but it's fine. You need to check it out. <laughs> yep. And I am on the flip side of that. I had just been doing some interviews for one of my other podcasts. So I was looking, I think, pretty good. So <laughs> I'm happy that that's the one that Levi said, Hey, can I post the video? Yeah. Works for me. It's <laughs> good. All right. And then on to our Shaun of the Dead feedback. First one comes from the pod father himself, Jason Cabassi. How often we get to hear from Jason? I love that. He says, I remember when I heard there was going to be a movie. <laughs> he says it just like that. It's weird. I don't know how he even typed that out. It's no. another <laughs> language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He says, I remember when I heard there was going to be a movie called Shaun of the Dead, and I thought, that sounds dumb. And I couldn't have been more wrong. I'll say the same thing everyone says. Yes, Shaun of the Dead is a great comedy zombie movie, but it's also a great zombie movie in and of itself. One of the best. I think it's my second favorite after Zack Snyder's 2004 Dawn of the Dead remake, but on some days I feel more warmly towards Shaun of the Dead. It was my introduction to the genius of Edgar Wright, and I just love it to death. Aww. I love that. I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. I don't think I ever thought it was going to be dumb, but... But yeah, definitely I was just like, oh, it's like a parody kind of thing. I'm going to check it out. And then, yeah, falling in love with it. It was also the introduction to Edgar Wright because I never watched Spaced and all the other stuff. I didn't really know him from before. So, of course, yeah, was also my Edgar Wright introduction. Fell in love with him there as a director. And then also I will say, yes, 2004 to the Honor of the Dead people know that is also my favorite. So, yeah, <laughs> me and Jason are meshing here. I like it. <laughs> So, Penny Lennox says, one of my all-time favorite movies, it's flawless. There are so many iconic moments, like throwing records at a Zed, and when they all learn how to act like Zeds. Five out of five. (laughs) The next one comes from Randy Stevenson, which, anybody listen to the last, uh, like the cast of us, we'll talk about that. He's the zombie guy, so I always love to (laughs) hear from him. Randy, you, Randy is a main <laughs> Zed. Like he's he lives in the same state as me. Oh, I thought he was just like a higher tier Zed than no. I was. No. <laughs> no. No. Randy lives in Maine and <laughs> I've I've had uh opportunity to meet him a couple of times 
and he's come to my trivia like and filled in on my team so he's pretty cool mm -hmm. yeah uh but he goes on to say one of the top zombie films there are some great cameos in the movie too the mirror group of survivors they run into is led by Simon Pegg's co-star Jessica Haynes from the TV show Spaced. In the back of Jessica's group is Matt Lucas, one of the great British Bake Off hosts. Tires, the hopped-up bike courier from Spaced, is also a zombie hanging outside of the Winchester, apparently playing the same character, just zombified. For what feels like a small movie, almost indie film that's nearing 20 years old, it's crazy how much staying power it's had culturally. To this day, whenever shit hits the fan in any situation, you're guaranteed someone will suggest going to the Winchester, having a pint, and waiting for this all to blow over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it should be the response to whatever's going on. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love that about the movie, that there's always that little glimpse of we're going to do this 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 go to the winchester wait for it to all blow over and the way they did it i think they were the first ones to really do it that way and other people have tried and it's just not the same uh -huh. so this next one is from ben beck who says ugh you're doing sean and i wasn't invited to guest i'm insulted lol Ben, uh, you can't be on every episode. <laughs> but it has been a little while, so I will put out the uh, invitation, so to speak, that uh, it is about time maybe we have you back on. So I'm sure, as we mentioned while talking about this episode in this movie, we plan on going through the rest of this Cornetto trilogy at some point also. So if you'd like to come back for Hot Fuzz or The World's End, I'll happily let you in on one of those because, yeah. I know you're a huge Edgar Wright nerd like me, so of course. <laughs> and you know, rumor has it, he wants to come on at the end of the summer for a big blockbuster movie about a certain water creature. Yeah, that we already have a guest for. Yeah. So maybe we'll just do a, something very different. But those are all teases, and you'll have to wait till later this year to see exactly. Yes, you will. But if you know uh, us, you know what the movie is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Next one coming from Christine Canding says, I simply love it. I use it to test my daughter's boyfriends. We'll all sit down and watch it together. And they don't have to love it as much as I do, but they really have to be entertained. That's my way of figuring out if I like them. I think that is fantastic. It's a great litmus test for sure. It is awesome. <laughs> I've never heard of anyone using it for that, but I'm totally on board. Yeah. <laughs> Sadie Wright says, it's one of the greatest films ever. I love that movie so much. Who doesn't love a Zom rom-com? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, no voicemail, but we do have a little message from Steve Brown, which in all of his wonderful words and poetry of the mind, he says, loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes that's all that's needed that's because exactly. that sums it up pretty great, Steve. <laughs> Just exactly. love it. <laughs> Thank uh -huh. you, Steve. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for the amazing feedback that we got on this for this movie, um, for this episode. Yeah. I can't think of a better welcome back for our season six opener than to have all this feedback. Yeah. Just, now you have to keep it coming or we're going to be like really sad. Now we're going to have a complex. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> we may. Yeah. You've built this up now. You have to keep it going. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you'd like to submit feedback like anyone whose feedback we just read, you can do so a number of ways. Um, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Run for Your Lives Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at RFYL Podcast. You can email us, runforyourlivespodcast at gmail.com. If you're enjoying the show, Tell your friends. We are available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, pretty much all other podcast players, including YouTube. Go to runforyourlivespodcast.com for all the links you'll ever need and give us a review on Apple Podcasts. That is the best way to share the love and get us out there even more. We really appreciate it. We absolutely do. And of course, speaking about sharing the love, I got to give a shout out to a couple of things going on in the podcast universe around us. My other podcast, Strange Indeed with Rima, we are in full force covering season two of the Netflix series Sweet Tooth. I am so happy that we're back on that. Uh, 
I just love checking in on Gus and the big man and everybody else in that show and seeing what they're up to. The season's been very different, but also like the same show that I love. Uh, the, the lightheartedness, a little more sparse, but also is great when it shows up, but like a lot of tension, a lot of tension, a lot of interesting things. I'm loving the season so far and interested to see where it keeps going. So if you're a fan of Sweet Tooth, definitely check out me and Rima covering it over there on Strange Indeed. We're having a fun time. Love it. And then other great podcastica stuff going on. Daphne's got her other podcast that she's doing regularly <laughs> right now. Yellow Jackets, WTF. Because, uh, yeah, going through the Showtime series Yellow Jackets, which episodes are dropping with streaming over on Showtime. So on Fridays, even though if you watch it, just like on the cable kind of thing. It's not till Sundays. So it will be ready for you on Sunday right after the episode. But if you get to watch it early on streaming, it is up there for you as well. Uh, and yeah, lots of great episodes there and doing extra feedback episodes as well. Lots of great feedback over there, which is awesome. It's quite the show to talk about. <laughs> oh my God, it definitely is. Every week there's something new and we're getting dangerously close to the end of the season and with the writer's strike we're not really sure when we're going to get a season three mm -hmm. um so we're savoring every episode that we have right now so if you guys want to um check out our coverage um yeah we're over on podcastica and give us a review on apple podcasts i know we say that a lot with regard to run for your lives it does help bring your podcast higher in the list of podcasts. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great way to show us a little bit of love. So definitely check that out. And, and, yeah, if you're a fan, give them some love. And then other podcastica stuff to definitely check out. Over on the What Is From cast, Alex and Lizzie continue to cover season two of From, which has been incredible. I really love this show. It's so just horribly underrated i wish more it people is. knew about it because man it's it's so good and they've been doing an incredible job of covering the episodes over there plus alex and lizzie have made some really cool connections and friendships with some of the cast members of the show and they just keep showering interviews on you guys throughout the, you know during yeah. the season it's just like i will check my podcast feed and I'm like oh my god they interviewed <laughs> this person and this person and this person they're just posting those it's so cool i love seeing what they've accomplished with that podcast with that show it's it's awesome and it's cool that they've kind of been you know brought into the frumily a little bit yeah <laughs> so it's really cool yeah it's so awesome the podcast is great the show is great so yeah check it out yeah also on The Cast of Us, Last of Us, season two's out now. No, I'm just kidding. I wish. I really wish. But <laughs> no, we still got quite a ways to wait on that one. But there is an extra episode that did drop over there on that feed where you can check out Jason and Randy discussing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which uh, I'm a huge Marvel fan, as you know. So you know I went and saw Guardians 3 on opening night and... It was so good. So definitely go check out their coverage oh, and then talking man. about it. Because there's a lot to talk about in that movie. <laughs> that was such a great movie. Mm -hmm. I loved it so much. I think it was a great wrap up to the trilogy. Absolutely. And then over on Perfectly Miss Maisel. That is right. Jade, Kara, and Erica are covering the final season of The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Going through episode by episode. So you want to check that out. That podcast is there for you. And then... On the Fear of the Walking <laughs> Dead Roundtable Rant. Uh, they are dropping that, I think, over on the Cast of Us feed as well. Or maybe the House Podcastica feed. But either way, go on podcastica.com. You'll find all the links to all those things. But yeah, uh, Jason has the Fear of the Walking Dead uh, Roundtable Rants because without shitting on the show too much, let's just say I stopped watching it. And I don't usually drop shows that easily, but man, it just got rough. But they're continuing to cover over there. The first episode of this next season, this new season that just started, is free on the Podcastica feeds. So you can check out their talk. But then if you want to hear them, because they're not holding anything back on this show in the way that it is right now. So if you can just check out the uh, Podcastica Patreon feed. I think it's just Podcastica or uh, Patreon.com slash Jason Cabassi, I think is what it is right now. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. I think only if you get like a dollar or two a month, that's like very small. You yeah. can have access 
to these uh, roundtable rants on this season of Fear the Walking Dead. They have so much fun with them. They really do. And I stopped watching as well. And I didn't think I would ever give up on a show that had zombies. Mm-hmm. But I could not watch this. Uh, it broke my heart in a lot of ways. Yeah. The, what happened to this show. I think there was so much potential for it to be so much more. Yeah. But if you're interested in listening to them talk, then yeah, definitely check out the episode that is available to everyone. And then if you want to keep up with that, check out the Patreon. And lastly, for Podcastica, the revisited podcast, Ben and Kristen still cutting back through rewatching all of Lost. And this week they have episodes one and two of season six they're covering. So they're getting right there till the end. They're almost done. And I think there's a couple of other things they're talking about maybe doing after they have wrapped Lost because they're in the final season now. So Yeah, they've made it. <laughs> it's great. And then lastly, other podcasts that we just give a lot of love to, the TV podcast Industries over there. Derek and John are back after a little bit of a vacation. They're doing their Star Trek Picard pub quiz episode. And then they have their own Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 review. So go check that out over there. They do a great job as well. That's a reminder that we have to get Derek back on this podcast. Yeah, absolutely. I think I even know exactly what movie he's going to do, and we've just been holding it yeah. until we can get a chance to do it with him. So yeah, got to get him back, make these time zones uh, work our, our schedule out somehow. <laughs> you know. But yeah, so that's all for that. But we are here. We're back. Season six running strong. So we will be back next week with another episode. And it's uh, one that's also kind of a long time coming. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm so excited to bring it to you guys next week. But Daphne, why don't you tell them what that is? Um, Chief Brody, Amity Island, Bruce 2, and Rima. Yes, we are going to finally tackle Jaws 2. Uh, we get to return to Amity Island to see what Chief Brody's been up to. More shark adventures. And who better to join us on that episode? Than someone who loves sharks as much as I do, Rima. Yeah. Pig's other co-host from Strange Indeed. <laughs> you know her. She's been on the podcast to talk about Jaws, to talk about uh, the Meg. This is perfect. Yes. Jaws 2, which I had never seen until we covered this one. So it's a fun one. And we had a blast talking about it for sure. So get your feedback in. Come back and join us next week with that one. Yeah, it's going to be great. And with that, we've reached the end of our first episode of season six. Holy crap. Yeah. Crazy. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everyone. I'm Daphne. And I'm Pete. And if you have to run, you better run for your lives. Bye-bye.